know it's chit-chatting. If they want to Talk, don't bother Welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Moosey. And we have a great pair of guests here. Uh, we're going to begin here on my left with Charlie Beale, the art director of the film Milk, about the life of Harvey Milk. And if you haven't seen it, rush out and see it as soon as you can. And Gilbert, Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. And Gilbert Baker next to Joni, who is known by, has many talents. I guess one of them is the Betsy Ross of the gay and lesbian movement, the developer of the rainbow flag, making his second appearance. And we can on say Let's welcome Talk. back to the welcome show. Welcome back yeah. to the show. <laughs> and uh, and oh, many things, including the mile-long flag on the 25th anniversary yeah, of Stonewall. Yeah, right. right. Around the world. Right, and the, right. the mile-and-a-half <laughs> wide one at uh, in, yeah, uh, Key West, Key West Florida. And this and has I'm been a big year for you. 30 years of working on the rainbow flag. Right. Yeah, That's right. right. He and never stops working. Never <laughs> stops working. <laughs> <laughs> and Grant Marshall of several many, yeah. parades this year. Sure. And uh, yeah, the yeah, rainbow yeah. flag loved worldwide and, and our struggle uh, continuing worldwide. And oh, we're uh, live, by the more way. Important. We're, we're live. live. And our number is 212-757-1538. So we're inviting callers to, to uh, you know, get involved yeah, in the conversation. Up. Calls right up. Yeah. Well, there's so much we have to talk about, so little time. I don't know how we're going to even touch on it. Uh, Maybe well, first I'll say I loved the movie. I thought the art Thanks. direction was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Because you faced a lot of interesting challenges in that yeah. movie. Yeah. Like, first of all, it's set in the 70s. Right. But it's not an Austin Powers, no, high, no, we, high uh, tech, high design uh, uh, look uh, at all. Yeah, Gus Van Zandt and uh, my boss, production designer Bill Groom. Shout out to Bill Groom. Yeah, yeah Bill. great. Uh, <laughs> uh, they decided at the very beginning that they did not want the movie to look designed. Mm -hmm. That they just wanted to do it real. We wanted to make the camera shop, you know, Harvey's camera shop look the way it really did. To make the Castro look like it really did. Um, Wasn't the camera shop an interesting challenge too? Just because of <coughs> they don't. Camera shops don't look like that anymore at all. Yeah, we, uh, well, to begin with, uh, you see the camera shop through 10 different phases. Literally, you see it in 72, 73, spring of 74, fall of 74. It goes on, and so not only did we have to recreate this camera shop in the original space, which is now a gift shop. Oh, interesting. Uh, but we had to show it redressed. 10 different times with different artwork on the walls. The right technology um, in um, terms of... Certain kinds of film boxes right. in the early 70s and different film boxes <laughs> of course, in the know. late 70s. Yeah. And all of that had to be created. We literally found old film boxes from the right time. Uh, we gave them to our graphic artist. He scanned them, oh, printed wow. out hundreds of them, and we had just... Do you have little a dozen tables of people folding them? Tables of people <laughs> piling them up and folding them and putting them together. Wow. So uh, That was amazing. I yeah. thought about that when I was watching yeah. it. I said it was amazingly realistic. Any yeah. photographer would have said that. Yeah. Well, let's uh, step back a second and just a I want to ask you, uh, uh, Charlie Beale, to tell me a little bit about who, and tell our listeners, some of whom uh, might not know who Harvey Milk was, who he was. Well, uh, Harvey Milk was... Uh, uh, sort of a straight-laced Republican in the 60s, living a closeted life with his boyfriend, and uh, managed to hook up with this guy, Scott Smith. You'll see that in the early part of the movie. And just threw it all aside, moved to San Francisco, became a hippie, and uh, uh, has, you know, saw you know, how the gay movement grew there, and then he saw also the police brutality against gays and uh, uh, that politicized him. And so he ran for office as a city supervisor uh, twice and lost. He ran for the state assembly and then eventually ran for supervisor's office and won and became the first openly uh, gay elected official in the United States. Well, that was, that's, that's, go ahead. I, have to well, I do want to correct that. Uh, Elaine Noble actually had been elected before that. But he was the first openly gay man who was elected. Right. And so I, they, Who is Elaine Noble? Elaine Noble was a congresswoman, I believe. Oh, I'm thinking New York. Am I correct? Here? I'm it's sorry. All my time. I was a yeah. little kid. I might have heard it, the name. That's a little bit inaccurate, but but he was um, really one of the pioneers of yeah. our movement. And you knew him personally. Very well. And you appear in the movie as yourself. <laughs> sort of. Playing <laughs> it. 
<laughs> Your very own iconic figure. Operated in routine. <laughs> well, things were really different in, in those days. It's so different from activism today, which we have, you know, the internet and instant communication. In those days, we actually had to call each other up on the rotary phones and have phone trees so that we could get the word out about protests and, and to what bring was people going. into the exactly. streets. Exactly, and Harvey was really a genius at at building uh, networks and you know making the the movement fun and sexy. And so. Well, I thought one of the most amazing scenes in the film is when he's connecting with the Teamsters, <laughs> who were one of his biggest supporters. And what was uh, Harvey's most famous statement? He used to say, "I'm Harvey Milk. I'm here to recruit, recruit you." Recruit you. Yeah. And he gave that speech to a bunch of Teamsters, and they were all laughing and cheering yeah. him on. And how is it that he was able to cross over and win the support of, like, the most macho of blue-collar guys? Well, I think two things. I think, number one, he was authentic in his sentiment and his belief in the importance of the labor movement and in respect for working people. Right. And I think he also had this incredible humor and natural charisma, so he was just natural. I mean, privately, he was uh, <clears throat> a lot deeper. There was a huge um, edge of sorrow, kind of the tears of a clown kind of guy. But in public, he had the charisma, the ability so to speak and, and to talk in a way that you heard your own voice. So even for people who weren't gay, they would hear him talking about their issues, labor or, or whatever. The elderly, and, and, yeah. And, 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 and get it, and get that, you know, he's, he's, he's one of us. And that crossover, if you will, was really um, amazing. And really one of the first times we'd ever seen that. About, what about the opposition that he developed? Because, of course, a big part of the movie, we won't tell people the ending of it, although it's in the newspapers yeah. and you can find out pretty easily. Um, the opposition that developed against him. I mean, the movie is based, you know, the, the unifying factor is the tape that he creates right. towards the end of his life. Yeah. When he, he knows uh, that people are out to get him and that he might yeah. possibly be assassinated. Yeah, that's, uh, and in the movie, Sean Fenn, um, you hear him recording this tape, and he says, you know, in the, if I'm ever assassinated, I want this tape to be played. And the, the way that it's done in the movie is verbatim, you know, word for word, the real tape. Right. But and I thought uh, it was brilliant the way the movie went back and forth, yeah. and you really yeah. got tied into the present. You didn't right. feel like you were constantly in a flashback. It, mm. was, right. it had a real present tense feeling yeah. about it. Yeah. And that, I think, had a lot to do with several different strata. It was the acting, but it was also the production design and that you really felt like you were just right there in that moment and sort of forgot about the tape and then right. it would go back to that right. and you'd realize, oh, I'm looking back over this, this period. This might be the moment to actually show a... Uh, oh, the trailer would be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So people well, can right get now. an idea about it. Great.